great workshop is made possible with our partners and of course the generosity of uh, the Healthy Mississauga Fund at the Community Foundation of Mississauga. Uh, they've been uh, able to fund this great initiative to allow us to offer this work, uh, this program and these workshops to our community. Um, and part of it is the Novo Nordisk Diabetes and Obesity Fund that uh, Save a Food Bank received to offer um, this program, which is great. So just wanted to recognize them uh, quickly uh, during our workshop today. So as I mentioned today, we're gonna be making the squash coriander pilaf, which, uh, which Chef Bergie will focus on for the second half of the presentation. And we'll allow uh, Amber, our dietitian, to uh, start with the first part of the presentation, focusing on eating well with the plate method and healthy eating for diabetes. Thank you so much, Kate. So um, I always like to start by acknowledging Seva Food Bank for providing us, uh, or especially me, the opportunity to speak to you. Um, it, it's a very uh, effective platform uh, where uh, we, are, we can just uh, come together and talk about some, some health topics. Uh, as Sanjay already said, he missed a few sessions in the beginning, but, uh, but that's our goal is it's okay, you can join today, you can join for the next few sessions. And uh, we try to talk about a uh, healthier way of living life. Uh, either you're living with chronic health conditions or you're not living with chronic health condition. Um, my name is Amber, I'm the diabetes dietitian. I work for this diabetes education program with Valfort Community Health Services. Uh, we are located in Malton inside Westwood Mall. Uh, the health center's name is Coconas Health Center. You guys may know about that health center or may not know about health center, but uh, that's a health center with uh, so many community services with the doctors, nurses, uh, physiotherapists, social worker, shop artist, uh, uh, and also the dental program under the same roof. Um, I'm a part of diabetes education program and I have been working with Seva Food Bank for quite a while. I would say, I think it's about six, seven years now that um, I try to uh, not miss any chance with Seva Food Bank to work through with my clients uh, and about, and my passion is about lifestyle interventions and to live healthier with chronic health condition and diabetes. Uh, moving along, why I give such a long description, because I'm a part of a diabetes education program. Uh, it's really important for me uh, to uh, interact with you uh, individually. And uh, also because I am here doing the session, um, it's also uh, one more thing that my program's expectation is to register people who are interested in this program uh, or, and, or who are taking attending my presentations. So if anyone of you is interested, please uh, let us know either in the chat box and we will email you the registration form. It's quite an extensive registration form and I know Kate has already emailed to some of you. Uh, two pager, uh, lots of questions, but please you would see after every question, uh, the answers, there is prefer not to answer option. Feel free to select that. Uh, these questionnaires are designed by ministry and they definitely made it quite complicated. Uh, if you think it's too much, uh, if and you allow me to call you, I can get your phone number from SEVA registration, but with your permission, and I can call you and we do the registration. It's just important for me to continue the services if I have registered clients to these sessions. All right, so let's talk about diabetes. Um, today, I was told to focus on balanced meals, right? It's a healthy plate model. And I just added a few more things on my slide. That's about the prevalence of diabetes. Because in order for me to make changes in my diet, I wanted to know it is really important for me. Because uh, maybe, um, why would I make any changes? Why would I balance my meal if it's not needed? So I try to add a little rationale and a little context for us to understand that it is really important. So it's my little class where people have different misconceptions about diabetes. And uh, some people think that uh, I have a touch of sugar. Some people say that I don't have diabetes, but I want pills. Uh, some of the people think that I have only stress diabetes and some people say that I have borderline diabetes. So you may know these type of people in your um, friends, circle, family, and that's very interesting because we just need to understand that 
diabetes is a chronic health condition. And I, I remember the word that Sanjay was using about metabolic disorder or metabolic issues. So that's one of the health issues that caused by the metabolic dis disturbances when body is unable to metabolize high sugar levels because they don't have enough of the hormone, which is known as insulin. Uh, but diabetes is a very, uh, I would say it's, it's a chronic health condition and it could be crucial if we don't manage it. In Canada, the, our 3 million people have diabetes. Uh, this is from the recent, recent research, 2018 cl clinical practice guidelines from Diabetes Canada. And out of these 90% uh, people living with uh, diabetes, uh, out, and out of these 90% are type 2 diabetes, and only 10% is type 1 diabetes. And they will make up a sum of 3 million people. I know people may get confused between type 1 and type 2. Type 1 never changes into type 2. Type 2 never changes into type 1. These are two different health conditions. Both are related to the metabolism of blood glucose level. Type 1, insulin absolutely do not produce any sugar. Type 2, they produce but not effective enough. That's the main difference. difference. But I want to focus today more on type 2 diabetes and the diet and the healthy eating. One more thing that I would like to express here that uh, out of that 3 million Canadians living with diabetes, region of peel is number one in Canada. And you guys know what is region of peel. Region of peel is where we live. It's Brampton, Mississauga, Caledon. So the, these are the region, these are the cities that make up the big region of Peel. And that definitely uh, takes the first place in Canada uh, of the, for the people living with diabetes. So you wanna take that, that, take that medal down and how we can do that by having a healthy lifestyle. When it comes to management of diabetes, there are four, three things I would say. It's like an equilateral triangle uh, and all three corners are equally important. The dietary modification on the left side is very, very important. Exercise and medications are also equally important and how well these three are doing, we can assess by monitoring. So that's how you would know that my diabetes is well managed. Dietary modification, exercise, and medication. These are the three main criteria for knowing that my diabetes is well managed. Or in order to manage my diabetes, I need to work with these three things. Feel free to uh, ask me any question about any of those, but I will be going into the balanced uh, meal or the healthy eating piece uh, more today. But again, if you have any question about exercise and medication, feel free to ask me. So um, for the balancing meal, that's a, that's a joke. Don't think it's right. Then everything on the presentation does not mean we need to follow that. So some people think we have to be on a balanced diet. So this uh, uh, woman uh, trying to be very smart, she is balancing it by putting a lot of food on two different sides of the balance. Absolutely wrong. That's not what the balance means. Balance means a plate which has... Half of the plate should be vegetables. So I sometimes show it as my both hands. So this much of vegetables in each meal as we wanted to make it a balanced meal. So the vegetables can be any vegetables. Vegetables, preferably, I would always say two color vegetables. So if it's a red vegetable, then maybe the other is a green vegetable. Don't always think that green is the only healthy vegetable. Yellow, and purple, like you can have brinjal and then you can have different color peppers. So different color vegetables have different types of vitamins. They have minerals, they have fiber, they have different types of antioxidants. So enjoy different types of vegetables with each meal. Ideally, balanced meal or healthy plate model is easier for lunch and dinner. So half of your plate should be vegetable. Then the rest of the half, we divided into two. So first quarter is protein. Protein can be, uh, um, we can have protein in our diet either from meat, fish, um, eggs, uh, seafood. So these are the examples of the non-vegetarian choices of protein. Vegetarian choices of protein can be uh, lentils, beans, tofu, uh, uh, 
I, I don't know cheese you may consider it as a non-veg or a veg choice, but these are all the options of protein. So protein is a very integral part of our healthy plate model, and that should be at least that corner of your plate or the size of your palm. So that is my protein. Either it is the piece of fish, it is a slice of uh, chicken or beef or steak, or even if it's the lentil or the beans, then I usually would say um, half cup of, depending on sometimes we would have lentil soup, then you can have a little bigger bowl. But if it's the uh, lentils with, with like a quite viscous uh, and thick concentration, then definitely half cup is enough for you to add as a protein in your diet. The last piece doesn't, uh, the last area of your plate doesn't mean that it's not important for me. I always take it in the last because in our, some of, of the cultures, we focus more on the starches and grain, but the starches and grain is only uh, important in our uh, meals, just to the quarter of this plate. Um, we grow up in most cultures, we always are taught from the beginning that even if I am eating rice and uh, chicken curry, my mother used to tell me to have rice in the plate first and then I would add the chicken curry. I am trying to opposite this definition. I am asking you to have vegetables on your plate first, then have protein in your plate and then have the last portion, which was used to be in some cultures. And I am actually using my culture example where we would have a starch as first thing on my plate. So that only required quarter of your plate. If you're eating a silver bread, then maximum one or two slices of bread. Uh, pasta, they have already given you the example. So anything that can fit in this, it's actually good for two people. Uh, corn, half corn. This is also a starch. Potatoes, um, the size of my fist or half of it, or you can have the whole medium sized potato. Uh, if it is rice, half to one cup, but don't go more than one cup. If you have diabetes, I may have individual session with you. I, might, I could ask you to go for less than one cup. But when I say one cup cooked rice, it's by measuring cup, one cup cooked rice. Uh, other forms of the starches, healthier starches could be quinoa, couscous, because they are high fiber and high protein uh, carbohydrates. So always choose high fiber options in this category. Uh, if you do a pasta, bread slice, high fiber is, is <laughs> to go. So on this slide, basically we have covered uh, this size of the palm. That's my protein, that's the starch, and that's our vegetable. On the plate, half plate is vegetable, preferably two colors, protein, and then starches and grain. So that's what our healthy plate looks like. It is all verified from Diabetes Canada and Health Canada as well. There is uh, some research and evidence around having fruit and milk with the same balanced meal. That's totally up to you. Some people prefer to have it as a snack and some people prefer to have it with their meals. So that's again, totally your choice. I personally think uh, having a different type of carbohydrate actually is very helpful for our well-controlled diabetes. So instead of having one medium-sized potato, I have a half medium-sized potato and I can have a fruit with my meal. So it's two choices of carbohydrate, but from two different food groups. So that's more about the a healthy plate uh, model and the balancing of meal with portion control. Uh, is there any question so far or I can go on, uh, go to the next slide. So I, on my end- Yeah, I have, a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Like while we are talking about the carbohydrate, if you can uh, like, uh, uh, you know, also mention the bad and the good carbohydrate and the mm -hmm. quantity of the carbohydrate uh, each day, because um, you mentioned sugar. Uh, sugar also um, is a carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. um, so is the wheat and the carbohydrate mm -hmm. comes from the vegetables as well. So I, at a higher level, it's, it's, a, it's a metaboli metabolization of the carbohydrates that we are consuming. So the good and the bad, and the quantity would help everybody Excellent. a lot. I can do that, definitely I'll do that. Kate, you wanna say something or should I continue answering this question? No, go ahead, sorry. Okay, uh, perfect. Okay. May I, may I ask uh, one question, please? 
Sure, sure, Basim. Yeah, um, you, you said for the vegetables, uh, so not uh, all vegetables are healthy. What kind of uh, like uh, vegetables non-health like, can you say? Oh, absolutely, so I will answer okay. all three questions. So I'll go one by one. Thank you so much, Basim and Sanjay, for the question. Any more questions? Okay. No, no, thank you, thank you, that's okay. it. So uh, about good carbohydrates and the bad carbohydrates. Um, the good carbohydrates are the carbohydrates that are complex, that are high in fiber, okay? So examples, as I have already mentioned, actually, that if you need to choose pasta, pasta is not a bad carbohydrate. You can choose a whole wheat pasta. That's actually a better choice of pasta. Uh, but the amount of carbohydrate is the key. So it actually relates towards the second part of your question, Sanjay, how much carbohydrate we can have in a day. So basically my answer was in the same balanced meal. So you can have three balanced meals per day. You can have 30 to 45 grams of carbohydrate per meal. And in a day, it's basically different ways of calculating carbohydrates per day. We say 50% of your total calories. So if I consume uh, 1,500 or 2,000 calorie diet, then my 1,000 calories are coming from carbohydrate. So we divide it by four, which is 250 grams of carbohydrate. It's actually a lot of carbohydrate and 2,000 calories is actually a lot of carbohydrate. I personally recommend 30 to 45 per meal, which will take us to the max of 150 grams per day. A little bit plus and minus with or without some snacks in between. And also when I say 150 grams per day, it's basically includes some hidden carbohydrates from the vegetables and protein, which I did not focus because I don't want to confuse here people. Like for example, half cup of lentils may contain 10 grams of carbohydrate or maybe 15 grams depend on how uh, thick that dal was made, right? So carbohydrate quantity per day, 30 to 45 grams per meal. One choice of carbohydrate usually is 15 gram. Example, a slice of bread, half medium sized potato, one cup rice is actually 50 grams carbohydrate. One six inches roti is one five 15 gram carbohydrate. So you choose what you're gonna eat to not go above 30 to 45 grams per meal. So that's to answer your question. Good and bad carbohydrate, another example other than fiber. So juices, they are simple sugar. So when I use the word sugar, basically I, sugar or glucose is the simple form of carbohydrate after digestion. And that I meant by the impact of carbohydrate inside your body. So um, all carbohydrates break down into sugar. So either you will have a whole wheat, flat seed rich bread, it will also break down into sugar because sugar is the simplest unit of carbohydrate. It's like the, it's like the beads or pearls in a necklace and it, when it is all joined, it's the bread slice. When it goes into the body after the process of digestion, it breaks down into its own individual beads and that's the glucose molecule or the, or the sugar molecule which body utilizes as a source of energy. Fruit is a better carbohydrate than juice because juice absorbs right away into the system and impacts my blood sugar level. But if I have a fruit, it will take time through the chewing process, through the digestion process, and then it will release the same amount of sugar, one apple or half cup juice, 15 grams of carbohydrate, but it will go in the system slowly so here comes the metabolism that Sanjay was referring to. After the digestion, food change into simple form and then it is metabolized into energy. And when people have diabetes or issue with metabolism, especially with the uh, uh, glucose metabolism, the problem is known as diabetes and which is why we wanted to watch what we are eating, how much carbohydrate we can have in a day, balancing our meals so our diabetes stays under control and consuming those food that has a less impact on our blood sugar, which is protein and the vegetables. They are our best friend. 
Basim asked the question, what are the good vegetables and what are the bad vegetables? So my friend, all vegetables are good vegetables. Potato and corn is not the vegetable. They are starches. Otherwise, I do not discriminate any vegetable. That's an old myth that vegetables grow under the ground are bad and over the ground are good. No, please dismiss all those theories. All vegetables are good. Try to use different color vegetables on your plate. Corn grows above the ground. Potatoes grows under the ground. Both have high carbohydrate. Both are considered as a starch, not vegetable. So vegetables, don't, don't avoid them. Eat all the vegetables. Uh, I think there is a question in some people's mind. I just want to say it out loud that frozen vegetables uh, are equally healthy as fresh vegetables. Just the taste is different. Organic vegetables and uh, other vegetables, nutritionally, they are same. Yes, they do contain pesticide, but pesticide may be uh, not good for your health, but they are still nutritionally, they don't impact on anything. So if we look in the nutritional adequacy of those vegetables, organic, not organic, frozen, fresh, they are same. Uh, yes, because of the pesticide, there could be some hazardous effects. So organic is obviously the preferable choice for some people. And same thing for frozen and fresh. Some people just don't like the flavor or color of the frozen. So they prefer to have the fresh vegetables. So that's your personal preference. I hope I answered the, all the question line by line. If I missed anything, feel free to ask me again. So I uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Amber. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. So I uh, so we can definitely, if anyone has question about exercise for diabetes management, physical activity has a very important role. And similarly, the medication always uh, ensure that diet, exercise, medication are equally important. It's like the balance. You cannot have one thing under control and other thing under control. It, it's, it will be a dancing mechanism. Always, if you want to balance it, you make sure you do dietary modification, you do exercise, and you take your medication if you have been prescribed. One 15 minutes Arabic exercise per week is the recommendation by uh, Diabetes Canada and Heart and Stroke Foundation. Health Canada recommends 10,000 steps per day, which is for the active lifestyle. But if you are living with a chronic health condition, so I would encourage you to aim for 150, 150 minutes of aerobic physical activity per week. Aerobic physical activity can be any of these pictures. It can be uh, uh, running, walking, dancing. Uh, some people prefer to do weight resistance exercise. That doesn't count for 150 minutes. That's additional, but 150 is more when you do some rhythmic movement and uh, swimming, dancing, running, jogging, walking. And that will increase your heart rate up, improves your blood circulation. So the glucose uptake improves. That's why we do it. going to head it over to Chef Bergy, who will be doing uh, another fun part of the uh, workshop today. She'll be making the recipes. First of all, we're going to use some sunflower oil today. One of the sunflower oils, uh, one of the different oils, I usually use olive oil. But the recipe asks for sunflower oil, and one of the things is uh, not, as, not only that it's a healthy oil, of course, if you use too much of it, uh, we use it a lot for uh, frying things um, because it can with, withstand really high temperatures. I use around two teaspoons of uh, sunflower oil. All right, while well, I'm warming that up. We talk for a moment about uh, the rice. Yeah. I have here whole grain basmati rice. It's a gorgeous rice. You know, I mean, most of you are probably from different uh, ethnic backgrounds, and you, I don't need to tell you anything about rice anymore. They are such a 
long grain and, and short grain, and there's uh, wild rice, but it's not really rice uh, that grows uh, in the water, you know. Um, but this one, I washed at least three times. First of all, we want to get the smell from the rice out of it, and then we never know what's in the rice. Okay? Even if it's packaged, uh, things can be in there. There can be impurities. And I personally don't like the rice taste when it's too strong with the rest of the ingredients I put in there. So while I'm trying to rise up a little bit, okay, I already put the sunflower oil in there. And I'm gonna roast it for a second. Are you cooking this on medium or yes. low? Uh, actually, this one is high. So let me be a real chef here. You know, you know throwing the things around like we do. It's not really has a reason for it, but we do it because it looks good. I'm just kidding. It actually moves the things around. So one of the reasons I um, I put it in some, some uh, oil before, it's like everything else. If you want to make it really tasty, I'm sorry, Kate, I'm running back and forth. If you want to make something really tasty, it doesn't matter if it's meat, it doesn't matter if it's uh, vegetables, if it's grain, if it's roasted for a moment, it changes the taste of the, of the rice, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm gonna put different kinds of spices in. So I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. By the way, I'm cooking with uh, gas here. So that means everything has a quick flame. It gets really quickly hot. So be careful if you uh, work with gas, then you don't uh, burn your things. I'm a big believer you need to put the high frames on when you want to roast something. I uh, see people doing it on small and medium. You never really get the, uh, the taste out of your product really nicely if you just have it on low, low, low. Okay, what we have here is I have some garlic salt, garlic. I have some common. I have a little bit pepper. I like it hot, so I was thinking I put a little bit of the chili in. Then I'm going to have some uh, coriander seeds and some curry powder. Okay. So if you look at your recipes, it says one teaspoon, one teaspoon, one teaspoon. This is really a recipe for, for um, if you don't know how to cook things. But if you are cooking a lot, you know how, how you like it. You know how your family likes it. So put a little bit more in it. We'll start with a small amount. Yes, the curry. I can put a little bit more of the garlic in. I know it doesn't say in the recipe. Then we got the common. One teaspoon. I, I love it. I have the chili. Maybe not a teaspoon, but I'm going to put some in it. And then we got the pepper. I don't like to use white pepper. I always use the dark one. The white pepper has a very strong distinguished taste. It's not to the liking to everybody. Okay. Now I'm going to mix it up a little. Two very important things. Good for your heart. Here we go. What is that, Chef? Turmeric. Oh, turmeric. Okay, also great. gives it a nice color, like the curry does. All right. So the spices and the type of spices are optional. Is that correct? You can put in whatever you like. I personally, I always like to put a little bit cinnamon as well in there. For the sweet flavor, and I'm gonna put a touch, 
really just a touch of salt. This is up to you, all right? You know what uh, Amber said, you have to be careful. You can eat anything, but be careful how much you eat of it. Always uh, think about what is good for you. Okay. All right, let me put this aside. And I think one of the things that I just like to um, uh, reiterate or remind everybody from the first workshop introduction to diabetes uh, is one of the things that I remember, Amber, you were talking about salt and we discussed, you know, the salt that you get from uh, items that you buy in the store as opposed to the salt you add in your food is very different. So actually you having more control over how much salt you put in your food is much less of an amount compared to what you would get if you were buying prepackaged items. Is that correct, Amber? Yes, absolutely. So that's, that we were referring to the amount of sodium in those foods. Like the percentage of sodium uh, I was referring to, that could be very high in just the regular salt that you could have add in your food. Right, and so, so the idea- just need to oh, go, go back to your basics, yeah. Right, and so I guess the idea is if you're adding a little bit salt in your food, that's okay, right? Because you have control over how much you're adding. The issue is when you're buying the uh, foods outside or prepackaged food, there you don't really have much control and usually those foods are oversalted, I find. Yeah, they are. Like uh, even some people, they say, I don't add salt, but then I used uh, canned tomatoes in cooking. So canned tomatoes, they have to add uh, sodium to preserve the tomato paste. That's a good okay. point. Yeah. yeah, so what did we hear do, uh, Chef? Um, I just put the water for the rice in there. Mm -hmm. So we have, so slowly the pilaf is getting to his name, you know? So mm -hmm. it's just, if you boil only rice by itself, so between, people ask me, what's the difference between a pilaf and the rice? You know, we are have those big names uh, about our, you know, our food. And if you watch the food shows, they are have incredible French names and stuff like that. So the difference is very simple. It's the sauce, it's the herbs you're making with the rice. Mm. We usually the rice you only cook in, in uh, water. water. Mm. Yes. So I do believe anyways, also salt water most of it. I believe you always should season it anyways. Even if you make a regular rice, season it a little bit, it tastes better. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare the vegetables. So here is your squash. This is a summer squash. Let me put those away. Sorry about that. This is a summer squash. It's funny because I totally forgot it too. My, my apprenticeship is long time gone. So I, I, I didn't really um, remember then, then zucchini is actually a summer squash. And uh, mm -hmm. I personally love zucchini because you can use it for anything. The only thing is with zucchini, you do need to season it well. So it has a taste to it. Okay? So I'm going to cut this zucchini into quarters, and then I cut it into smaller pieces, all right? So I'm adding the zucchinis, actually, while the rice starts boiling. I'm going to add the zucchinis in there. And like I said before, instead of the chicken, because we're gonna make it a vegetarian dish today, I have some beans, red beans. They work like meat for the vegetarians and also sometimes so you don't, if you don't feel like meat, you can use that instead. I was just going to quickly say, if I may add, um, if you have small children, like I do, uh, and they don't like zucchini, one of the best things you could do is grate it on a very fine grater. And they, it tastes really nice. It's very Great different, uh, but it's one way for them to, to like it without knowing it's actually zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, and so, frankly speaking, I, I like this uh, shredding, uh, either you do zucchini because, or maybe some carrots, it just adds such a nice color to our rice. Yes, agreed. And so convenient because we are not like Chef Burgi who can cut it like this, so nice cube. <laughs> shredding is always easy. Yeah, absolutely. So coming back to the young fellow before, I mean, the recipe does not ask for any other vegetables besides squash. Uh, I think that's it. So I was thinking we have the, right now the season of all the vegetables. So use other vegetables, use some fresh vegetables. I have some peppers here. So I'm gonna add the peppers to it. I'm gonna cut it in maybe bigger pieces. It's already washed. Always make sure um, then they're washed and a little bit dried up. And then we cut it into slices. You can have bigger slices, but because it's a, um, not very soft, a, a, a peeler, we want it to cut it into smaller pieces. Here we go. I have two beautiful colors. It also gives it a little sweet taste to it. I don't know, Amber, is there a minimum how much peppers and, and sweet vegetables you can put in? No, 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 there is no, you uh, I think we are doing it uh, like perfect thing. Like we're adding a lot of vegetables in there. So that's one perfect example of one pot meal with a lot of vegetables. Yeah, perfect. And look at the color. It's just gorgeous. Ah, it's amazing. Yeah. So now I'm gonna put in my beans, red beans, are those different colors. Wonderful. Wow. This is looking really yummy. Yeah. This is like, so guys, if you would see the healthy plate model that we just did, like that was a picture from Google. But Maybe. this is the real life picture with all the colors, two colors, vegetables, high fiber protein choice, and rice. And I don't even see rice. So that's what we were talking about balancing meat. Thanks, Chef Burgi, for giving such a nice practical perspective of what we just teach people. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. We're going to add some lemon juice to it. Mm. Can we add lime instead? Like you can also use lemon? lime. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what is the difference between lime and lemon? They are two different fruits. <laughs> I kind of prefer lime. It's different. Yeah. No, it's I, like think, I think lime is better because it doesn't have seed. <laughs> they're cousins, but they're a bit they different. They are related to each other, absolutely, but they are different in the taste. They are both growing on trees, but they are different. Okay. Would you recommend use lime in certain food or lemon in certain fruit? Like, is there a, a standard? No. Do it by mm -hmm. taste. Do it, you know, everything you do, taste it. You know, like mm -hmm. this one right now, I will taste a little bit just to make sure it's perfect. It's mm -hmm. just perfect. I mean, the seasoning, it's not overly sour from the, la from the lemon. Mm -hmm. uh, taste uh, all the different vegetables I put in. There is another uh, important part that comes later. But right now, we're just gonna cover. So do any any of you have any questions so far? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, uh, these, uh, these beans, uh, what kind of a beans are there? And are they from the can? Like, are they pre-boiled, pre-steamed, or are they from the can? These ones, these ones I used, yes. I, I washed it, I drained it. And I put it in there. But you can use also uh, the other beans. You know, you make your own. You let it stand overnight, and the next I day. See. Okay. Okay. So, so they are canned, canned beans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What What I don't like personally, what I don't like too much is when people don't rinse it off properly, because, uh, like Amber said before, that the food got spoiled. Uh, it's usually conserved in, in a lot of sugar or in a lot of salt. So drain that really good. Or if you 
feel like you shouldn't use it at all, then, then make your own beans. So if you do the same thing with lentils, you can cook them right away. But with beans, you set them in the, in the water the day before, and the next day you just boil them. Yeah? All right, in the meantime, because one of the ingredients, we are also going to have is some armos. Amber, I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about armos? For me, armos is the magic here, not what well, is not really a nut, actually. We are talking so what, about uh, almonds? Yes. Yeah, almonds is uh, the, so, Almonds is a type of, obviously, you know, nuts. They are high in protein, good quality fat. We call them polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, they will help to increase good quality cholesterol in our, in our um, good quality fat and thus leads to healthy cholesterol inside our body. Uh, it is very interesting. Our, we don't eat cholesterol. It's the type of fat that may cause high cholesterol inside our body. So almond is a good example of a healthy fat in our diet. Uh, they do have fiber in it, which is very interesting because of their skin. So what Chef Burgi is doing right now, no soaking, no removing skin is needed. She's using the whole uh, seed with fiber. Almonds also contain protein. Uh, so I always tell people who are on vegetarian diet that uh, they should look for options uh, for their protein intake. Um, we use kidney beans. Now we're using lots of almonds. So there we go. We have a lot of protein in this healthy dish. Yeah, so good quality fat, lots of protein and fiber. And yes, there may be some carbohydrate, but don't worry about that. Don't count carbohydrate in everything. They are not bad people. <laughs> and isn't, isn't the almonds, aren't they they're good for your heart? Isn't it? Yeah, because of the polyunsaturated fatty acids in it. So what I was doing here is I just, I had some um, pure uh, almonds. I don't like when, when the shell comes up because it, it really tastes so good with with the little shell on the outside, you know? And now, to make it even more flavorful, I'm gonna roast it for a few minutes. I like how you said, Amber, though, you know, like carbohydrates is not your enemy, they're good guys, because I think it all comes down to the big picture, right? It's not just about one thing, it's about like, you're talking about the plate. So it's the big picture, I think that's always important to keep in mind what your overall uh, diet looks like, what you're doing in general. So it's not, the little things matter, but it's also the big picture that is important. Yeah, and eating. I think I need to emphasize more lately now because of the keto diet and no carb diet, people have these misconceptions that we should not be having carbs in our diet. I understand when people avoid starches and grains, that's okay, now you can limit that. But uh, please don't say no to carbohydrate because it's the primary source of energy inside our body. Our right. brain can only use energy from the metabolism of glucose. So if I'm only having protein and vegetables in our diet, that's very limited amount of uh, carbohydrate in my diet. And then my body has to literally fight from the food that give me this glucose so that my brain can function normally. Right, and it makes sense because you also don't want to have low blood sugar by not eating any carbohydrates, right? Absolutely. So, uh, yes, what are we doing here? Is it coriander? This is coriander, yeah. Anybody, anybody can tell me the difference between coriander and cilantro? I thought it's the same thing. One is the seed. <laughs> no, 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 no. Coriander is also a leaf, no? <laughs> one is the seeds and one are the, uh, the leaves. Oh, okay. I found coriander leaves and coriander seed. <laughs> it is the same plant. It is the same plant. And the magical thing about coriander is, uh, or, or cilantro is, then you can use everything, okay? You can eat, eat the stems with parsley, for instance. The stems are not so good. But with, with, uh, it's actually called uh, Asian parsley, but you can eat everything out of it. 
So what I do is, because I already roasted my almonds here, so now I'm getting ready. And my Ooh, pilaf comes that out. Smells so good. My yeah. pilaf comes out from the thing from the oven, and I'm gonna add this to it. I like that you're using the stems, but nothing is discarded. That's really nice. I use the whole thing. It's you know what? If you find me on an island and there's nothing, the, the last thing I should I can eat is probably cilantro. I will ask for. <laughs> That's how much I like cilantro. Same here, yeah. Yes, it's really nice. I don't want to cut it too fine mm. because we want to taste the cilantro also in the food. Here we go. Why not uh, use the spinach? Yeah, why not use spinach? Yeah. You can add, you can add spinach, yeah. You mean instead of it? Instead of the cilantro? In yeah, and instead, instead of this, uh, yeah, to use the spinach. It has a different taste. It does have a different taste. When you taste uh, spinach by itself, uh, there, there's not much flavoring left in cooked food. The best way to eat spinach is actually raw, only you can't eat too much of it. Okay? Okay. So it's, uh, because it's not good for your um, intestines and uh, I'm sure Amber can tell you more about it, but um, I, I, if you don't like cilantro, use chai or use parsley or, or use some basil, fresh basil, for instance. You know, oregano? You don't, yeah, oregano. Okay. Uh, rosemary, but, but use fresh rosemary yeah. or put the dry rosemary in right away so it can boil with the rice and with everything else, okay? Yeah, the, the one question to, uh, to Amber. Yeah, that one, uh, Amber, the, you see, she's using a different color of paper, right? Uh, like uh, yellow and orange and, uh, right? And this, uh, this, uh, this type of paper, if you see uh, when you buy like any fruits or any vegetables from market, you will see that there is a sticker on each, uh, like on each like uh, piece. They started with the 3,000 and some fruits started with 4,000. There is, there is no, this number, there is not put like randomly. Uh, 4,000, it is started like put this organic, like or, organic, uh, organic like uh, vegetable. 3,000, why is coming different color like uh, pepper before we are, we know it's, it's green. Originally it's green, now it's becoming different color. Like, uh, like black, like coming uh, red, like coming uh, yellow and, uh, and orange. And the 3,000, it's non-organic. Like uh, maybe are they playing with the genetics of the of the of the fruit or vegetable. That's it. Depends where it's coming from, isn't it? Also, yeah. Like it's it's allowed in, in, in the states that genetic modified. Form. Yeah, I think I think Amber maybe she she knows about these numbers which is already. No, it's used. very interesting actually. I, I should admit, I don't know much about these numbers, but I know that genetically modified foods are allowed here as per Health Canada and Food and Drug Association. Uh, so all of these things are all of the signs when they do on the vegetables, it has to be tested by the authorities and if they approve that, that could come in the market. But Basim, I'm so sorry, I think I disappointed you, but I don't know much about the 3000 code and the 4000 code. Uh, my knowledge is basically based on the evidences that organic and inorganic and the nutritional adequacy of the of the uh, end product of the vegetable. Um, I also want to comment on the spinach instead of uh, you can use coriander. So some of the vegetables are used in the food for the aroma or the aesthetic qualities, like, you know, for the fragrance. Uh, Garnishment. And, uh, garnish as well. So these the examples that uh, Chef Burgi has used, uh, basil or oregano or the fresh rosemary or the coriander or the cilantro, basically they are not adding mainly for the nutritional piece, they are adding more for the aroma and, the, and enhancing the flavor value. So that's why we have the chef there. When you, it comes to the nutrition, um, our vegetables, our rice already have all different color vegetables to uh, compensate the nutritional piece. So cilantro is not there for nutrition. 
cilantro is mostly there for the garnish but you can add spinach if you like and then you can add spinach maybe while cooking because cilantro definitely uh, spinach definitely will not add aroma but yes from nutritional perspective i would add a cup or maybe a two cup of spinach in my rice pilaf but that's your choice okay thank you thank you so much so i wanted to add uh just looked up a great question um i looked up an article on cbc and it says here when the number starts with three or four it means the product was grown conventionally so just regularly it could be maybe gmo or non-gmo we don't know but it's non-organic and then number nine would be organic when it starts with nine and then there's also an eight if it starts with an eight it means that the product has gmo products in it but that mm -hmm. apparently i think is not being used anymore because that really affects the purchasing power of companies so i think it would likely be either three or a four and then a nine for organic i put all the rice our vegetables and everything in this dish so now i'm gonna use half of my cilantro I love to use cilantro in the last moment because that makes my dish the most flavorful one. Look at this. If you wow. love cilantro, then put the whole thing in. It gives them a nice color, all those different yellow, orange from the peppers, red from the peppers, green from the cilantro. I would love to add uh, raisins too, or like cranberries. You if can, I was of them. course. The recipe is a recipe. The recipe is always a basic recipe. You can always make it better. You can always make it your own. Okay. Amber, what is your outlook on dried fruits? Uh, yes, definitely add flavor and color. Use uh, cautiously because they are simple sugars. So that's what I would say. Uh, cranberry, raisins, they are dried fruits. So don't, uh, like a quarter cup is uh, 15 grams of carbohydrate. It's like one standard size fruit. But we usually don't add too much in our salad and then the whole family will enjoy the same salad and a quarter cup or maximum half cup. So use sparingly, okay. Because it's, it's, a, it's a simple sugar. So does the dry fruit also, uh, uh, is uh, almonds and walnuts, they're also dry fruits? Uh, no, they, they are nuts. Uh, oh. Basically dried fruit is the one uh, when the fruit is dried. So ah, I see, okay. The dried grape, cranberry ah, is the dried cranberry, yeah. Because the packaging that is available in the market, sometimes they put uh, uh, all the other stuff as well and they say it's a dry fruit basket. But it has almonds, walnuts, yeah. so, cashews, uh, nuts, pistachios. Nuts are, nuts are no problem. It's just uh, uh, dried fruit, as the name implies. Uh, yeah, when, okay. they, when the fruit is dried to a smaller or they take the moisture out okay. of it. So how is dates? Dates? Dates as a fruit, it's it's a fruit. So the portion is two to three days, depending on the size. Uh, okay. That will contain one choice of carbohydrate, that is 15 grams. Protein grams and the sugar is simple sugar is still. They they are they are carbohydrate. No, they are complex sugar in it. It's complex carbohydrate. Complex. Okay. Okay. Yes, it is very sweet, so that's why yes. we have a smaller portion. Okay. So it's a type of carbohydrate which is actually fructose in it, which is quite sweet. Uh, that's why people think, oh my God, dates are very high in sugar. So we, yes. that's why we recommend a smaller portion. Same thing for banana. Half banana has the same amount of sugar as in one apple or one peach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm over here, so they see you too. Oh, okay. Can't really see us though, hold on. I have to change the camera. Maybe this time you should be the one for showing up. Okay. We still have many people there, which is great. I'm really happy that for the most part, everybody stayed until the end. Oh, this looks very nice. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. This is very good, very like nicely uh, flavored, it's not so much spice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Delicious. Try it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna love it, and you can add Thank you. different kind of vegetables. It doesn't have to be the. You can use a different rice. You can use it also with um, uh, um, quinoa, maybe quinoa, couscous. Couscous. Yeah, you can make that as well. So make it your own, make it special and make it 
perfectly uh, seasoned for yourself. Thank you. Uh, um, the last thing I was just going to mention is I don't want to forget the homework piece that I talked about. So I really hope to see you in two weeks again for our next workshop. And the homework that I'd like everybody to participate in and hopefully share some feedback is I, I want to encourage everybody to try at least one new vegetable or fruit since we talk about the importance of it. So from now until two weeks later, when we meet again, I'd like you to take the opportunity to try something new that you've not tried before. Uh, be creative and I really would love to hear sort of the feedback or what you came up with or what was the experience like, because the worst thing that could happen is you won't like it. But the best thing that could happen is you just discover something that's amazing and adds extra layers of flavor to your dish. Uh, so that's pretty much it for me. Did you want to share something? Okay, Chef Berg, you wanted to quickly. Oh, yes. Look at how beautiful that is. Wow. The final dish. And you can, that's a lot, right? So you can definitely store you some. You can free feed some. your whole family. So mama and children, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice dish for everybody. Excellent. Wow. Um, so if there's no other questions, uh, I think we can wrap up here. And I'll be sending you some additional resources um, and some, I, I'm gonna be sending the videos too once I edit those. So you will have access to that. And if you have any other questions after this, please feel free to reach out to myself or Amber. She's provided your, her phone number. Um, and uh, I think that's it. So have a good evening, everybody, and uh, be safe. And thank you so much. Thank you so thank much, you everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.